Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another edition of the Crispy Noodle Podcast. Let us be the crispy noodle in your vegetarian salad of life and boring news. Uh, we're actually live for this episode. Woo! Do it live. Do it live. Yep, we're, we're doing this one, a special live one. Uh, there's a couple of things uh, that's going to be hitting the news wire uh, that we're going to talk about on this week's episode. Um, I guess the one off top of the bat, though, uh, is going to be like, this is kind of like our first or our last ep- or not for our last episode before the craziness of the true NFL season. So that's yeah. exciting. So we'll have that coming up next week. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, we're doing a special live episode. Woo! That's right. We're doing it live here on Facebook Live every now and then. Uh, we like to change it up and, uh, you know, give you a live experience uh, on how we put together this crazy show. So thank you guys for tuning in uh, for this episode. Uh, I'm Rich Liebig. I'm Michael Costanzo. And uh, we are here to give you some interesting tidbits in the world of sports, entertainment, and odd news. But before we get into all of those news, Mikey, how are you doing, my friend? What's up? Doing good, doing good. Um, this past weekend, I had an opportunity to finally uh, watch the entirety of uh, season three of Barry. Yes, was, finally. Um, so good. You know, it's just one of those things where I kept on putting it on the back burner. Uh, and I'm like, oh, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. Um, and I finally did it. They're so short. They're like half-hour episodes. So I just yeah. finished it in like a day and a half, two that days. Is, that is the good part about like yeah. having a half-hour show. It feels oh, yeah. like you can knock it out. Oh, it was, it was amazing. Um, I also started in on the final season of Better Call Saul. Finished a couple episodes yes. there. So I, I got a bone to pick, though, with AMC. Oh, yes, I know. Yep. So, did I mention this in previous weeks? I don't I don't. No, remember. you didn't mention it on the show. Okay. So, here's the deal. Should, should this be a what's pissing us off? Sure, go ahead. Yeah, you know what? Why not? It is. We're gonna we're, we're doing this live, so we're literally flying off of the seat of our pants here. So, inadvertently, we're doing what's pissing us off here on the Crispy Noodle. And it's down, about left and down, about right. Come on, let me get your right stuff right. Get off stage, goddamn goo. Get on my nerves. All right, so there we go. We already we're not even three minutes into this episode, and something's already pissing us That's off. That's my secret. I'm always angry. Yes, and appropriate too. You're wearing Marvel. I am. Yeah, yeah. that's a Hulk reference. Yes. So, um, what is your beef exactly? AMC went from a premier, um, basic cable network that produced really high quality content to in my opinion one of the worst networks on television because one their basically the crutch that has become the walking dead they have like four different walking dead yeah series. it's getting ridiculous they have better call saul which was ending which was one of the best shows on tv um and you'd think you'd think folks that they would want to make that front and center. You know, it's always nominated for so many awards. It's criti- it's a critical darling. Oh, yada, yada, yada. The successor series to Breaking Bad. Uh, this final season, they're supposed to finally, the timelines are supposed to finally collide there uh, at some point. Um, so you'd think, you'd think you'd be able to watch these amazing episodes that they'd want people to to partake. They'd want them to watch. They'd want them to come in and watch them on on their on their network or maybe even on AMC plus that's a great idea subscribe to our streaming service you can watch this amazing award winning show but guess what folks you'd be wrong apparently they don't want you to watch a goddamn thing because about i to get all stupid up in here i'm like i'm going to watch better call Saul. go on AMC guess what only the last 8 episodes i'm i'm like okay that's weird whatever cable you know, providers have weird deals with networks, but you know where the episodes will be? Well, they'll be on their own streaming service. Absolutely. They would definitely, AMC they would definitely the want to put their own show on their own streaming service and charge you $7 a month to watch their own show on their own streaming service. Also, not there. So I'm like, AMC, what in the actual F are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> By God, what the hell's going on? So I'm like, okay, there must be some service out there. Maybe they have a deal with Netflix or maybe Hulu or maybe Amazon. No. Nowhere can you stream the first half of season six of Better Call Saul. No. Nowhere. Nowhere except for on the high seas. 
Um, yep, that's right. This is where this is why this is how you push people to do things like that. AMC. If you wonder why, oh, why has viewership not been as good as it has been at the peak when we had Mad Men, Breaking Bad, and Walking Dead all at the same time? It's because you're crap now. Yeah. I mean, literally, there should have Outside been Outside of Better Call Saul, the network is nothing like what it used to be. They, they should have had some way for you to watch season six. That's ridiculous. So irritating. Thank God my parents are from the previous century, and they still had it saved on their DVR so I could watch it there. But if it hadn't been for that, I would just have to wait a year for it to come out on Netflix, yeah. which is ridiculous. It's an award-winning, one of the best shows on TV that's like what you want in bold neon letters. Come watch Better Call Saul, seven dollars a month, AMC Plus. Yeah, there it's you go. It's literally that. I was literally, I got a free trial subscription. I I went onto the app. I'm like, tr- get the trial subscription. I'm like, I'll even pay the seven dollars for the first month just to watch the show. They they would have made an easy seven dollars, like like that. Like I, yep. I like I could have mailed you, a, you know, a five and two ones, just like that. Yep, easy AMC, peasy. you lost seven dollars right no. there. But how many people like me are out there that would have paid seven dollars just to watch? Now, the counter argument is that they want me to buy each episode individually on Amazon. No, no, no. Nope. Not no. doing that. No. No. Because uh, at that point, you're going to be uh, owning your own pirate ship. That's right. I'm going to be sailing. Yep. Uh, so there you go. Mikey is pissed off there at AMC. Sorry. Uh, to be fair, AMC has kind of gone down the tubes. They're kind of trash now, right? Yeah. I mean, they don't. They like, name another AMC show. Somebody name another AMC show yeah. that doesn't have some kind of zombie in it or. Reference to Breaking Bad. Uh, the only one I can think of is uh, Kevin Kneff himself. Is that good? I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. But that's well, it. I stand corrected. That's it. That's the only thing I can think of. Everything else. At uh, one point, they had, at yeah. their heights, oh, yeah. they had Mad Men entering its like final seasons. They had Breaking Bad just peaking, and they had The Walking Dead early on, which was more of a drama than an action show. And like they will never, ever recapture that. This cannot be made good. It's shameful. It's a shameful, shameful day. Yep. <laughs> have yeah. Three of the biggest shows at one point and then go from that to nothing. Nothing. Yeah. It's a shame. But yeah, I do remember those Sundays. It was crazy. Yeah. That was literally like you'd blocked out your entire Sunday night. AMC was the place to be. It was like AMC and HBO. Yeah. No, nope. not anymore. Well, HBO, I think, is still still is, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. But yeah, definitely AMC, unfortunately. I, yeah, I, I would agree. I think they've kind of taken a back seat now. Yeah. Definitely. Yep. Definitely. So, so there you go. Did that feel good? You got that off your chest? That felt great. <laughs> that felt great. Rich, what have you been yeah, up part, to? Part of this podcast yeah. is actually just therapy. We're, I, you we're, know, not, we're not actually People can hosts. come. They can listen to us air all of our grievances, and they can hopefully feel a little bit of that relief as well. Yeah. We're, we're not actually a, truly a podcast uh, endeavor. <laughs> this is actually therapy. This is just secret therapy, folks. Yeah. Very good. Lay down. Tell us about your trauma. Yes. How did AMC hurt you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rich, did AMC hurt you recently? What have you been doing? Uh, no. Um, I guess the big thing for me is I've been I've been uh, playing my PlayStation 5. Yes. I finally got a PS5. I was finally one of the lucky ones chosen. One I, of the chosen few. Yeah. I, it's so it's still so weird. The I Lord can't. Sony bestowed its light upon you. I, I can't believe it's still like at this weird like I don't think it's ever going to get like the 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 supply shortages is never going to get fixed. Uh, yeah, at this rate. It's like, so backlogged. And also, like, is everybody still ordering PlayStation 5s? Like, I thought by now there's got to be millions of units out. There has to be. Like, I can't imagine that. I, I don't understand why there's still so few available. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, like I, our, our, I see the notifications like, uh, you know, oh, like Walmart has like three units available. Like, it's like parceling out like bread rations in the middle of a war. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't understand. Yeah. So I, I felt very lucky that I was chosen from from PlayStation Direct, and I was able to get it. So you got the console. Yep. You got it all booted up, set it up on the nice big TV. Yep. What are you playing? So you're you'll be happy. Uh, I'm playing uh, the Horizon series. Yes. Because I never very got good. into it. Yeah. Um, I'm starting off with um. Uh, what's the first one? Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> Zero Dawn. Thank yeah. you. I'm starting off with Zero Dawn. Right. And then I've got the 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 other one, Forbidden West, ready to go when I finished uh, Zero Dawn. Nice. So uh, I feel like I feel like this has been like a, a tradition now. Is also when I start a new PlayStation generation, I'm I'm entering a new franchise because I did this with Uncharted for PlayStation Four. Yep. I had the Uncharted bundle. So. 
and I, I up until that point, I never played Uncharted. So, bam, I got into that. Here, I'm getting into Horizon. That's the way to do it. You yeah. get a new console, you want to play new stuff, you know? Yeah, so it's interesting. I, I feel like that's, like, my way to get into, like, the current series of, of, um, of the generation, you know. Whatever the generation is, I just jump right into, like, a new series. Right. So that's what pretty much I've been up to with, with that. Just playing that. It's a fun game. I mean, if no, if you guys haven't played it, you definitely have to try it. I mean, you're hunting robot dinosaurs. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I know you, you like the whole the whole dinosaur bit. So yeah, what do you, what do you like most about it? Because you're about halfway through, you said. Yeah, it, it's a it's great open world, uh, content. Um, I like the whole R- RPG customization of the of the character. I love those skill trees. Yeah, I love those games where you have skill trees and stuff like that to develop your character. Um, yeah, it, it it's an interesting post uh, apocalypse story. Yeah, that I still haven't really found out why we're at certain things yet, at yet. Right, like these machines keep getting made. Why? Right. Who's exactly. making all these machines? All will be revealed. Right. So I'm, I'm. It's a it's a very cool like sci-fi plot that has lots of twists and turns, and yeah, it's it's very very cool. Yeah, it's weird. It's it, it's weird. It's like part sci-fi, part Red Dead Redemption, part uh, I I. I it's arrow like, shooter part. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. It, it's it's always been hard to describe because it's like it's set in like the far future. It's like set in the far future, but everybody's been thrown back to like caveman times. Yeah, really like hunting with bows and arrows, and like they're just rebuilding. I, 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 I tweeted at you. I don't know if you caught it. I feel like I'm playing Red Dead Mech. Red Dead Mech. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I need to check Twitter more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I feel like when I'm playing this game. Basically, you get yeah, you get your all your robot, you know, whatever, and you're, yeah, yeah. So that's what uh, I'm up to. I'm I'm trying to conquer the Horizon uh, series of video games. Nice. So uh, we have that, um, and then uh, yeah, Labor Day weekend's coming up. Uh, yep, that's yep. I'll be uh, you know nice little holiday break. But then, man, after that, it's football season, man. It's I'm, football time. I, like, this is what I'm ex- – it's it's weird. I'm just like oh, – I'm so excited that this is, like, the last podcast before we're in, like, full-blown – And then it's fantastic. Full yeah, like – Talking about right, the like, Eagles like, every week. Like, football is a major part of our podcast. Like, yes. we, we have the Fantastic Four picks. We have constant game recaps. Uh, you know, there's something one of us sees or something. We're like, what the hell just happened? I think it's, I think it's safe to say it's both of our favorite sports. Yeah. I mean, this is I, I did the math. This is going to be my 25th season I'm watching, which wow. is weird. Oh, yeah. Why did you do that math? Because I thought of Brett Favre and that was 1997. <laughs> OK, then I look. Brett Favre was still I don't I know he did weird stuff, but he was still an awesome quarterback. Well, by that math, then I guess technically I started watching when around the time the Eagles drafted McNabb, so I'm at like 23. Yeah, so that was what two? What, 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 that was McNabb 99 was drafted draft. 99. Yeah, yeah. Did he play right away? Uh, I think he played part of the season. Yeah, that was Andy Reid's first season. They went like five and eleven, and then the very next season, yeah, they turned like it, turned yep, it that's around. That's right. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm yeah. ready. To, I'm ready to get this going. So many storylines. So you know what? Let's launch right into yeah. speaking of football. Yeah, the first uh, batch of topics here. Time for the sports sampler. So you're not good at sports. It's a very small part of life. Sports, 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 sports. In your face! <laughs> oh yeah, sports coming at you in your face uh, here. And uh, although you know we're not at the games yet, uh, there's still some news in the football world. Um, Ba- you know, let's just jump right into it. The Eagles are just making trades right before the season starting, trying yep. to bolster the roster. I mean, I think it's a great indication that Howie thinks that this is a year that this team needs to sh- needs to shine. I mean, you've got a weak division. Dallas really didn't do that much to, uh, t- you know, to to bolster their roster this no, year. If anything, they've lost pieces. Zeke is washed. Amari Cooper was traded. We'll get to it. Tyron Smith is uh is, is hurt. injured. Yeah. Um. So it's I yeah I think Howie sees this as a year to strike. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know when you look at the rest of the division, there's not much competition there. You know pretty much where the Commanders and the Giants fall. The big question mark was Dallas. Dallas I think has gotten worse, especially when you view Dallas compared to the moves that the Eagles have made. And I just 
you know, I, I compiled a list of all the key additions this offseason that the Eagles have accumulated. And it is like a shocking list. Like, it is the type of list you put together where you think now is the year. Like, yeah. it is win now. Like, they're going, they're pushing all the chips in. And it either ends up as Dream Team 2.0 <laughs> or, or it ends <laughs> up, you know, like. It could. You know, I don't want to say 2017, 2018, but, you know, it's it very much has that that same mentality of going all in. Let me tell you their additions here. So starting with the draft, not only do they draft big time defensive uh, tackle Jordan Davis, one of the best defensive linemen in the draft. They also get the replacement for Jason Kelsey in the early second. Yep. Cam Jurgens. They also land a linebacker, Nakobe Dean, who was supposed to be a top 20 pick in that draft. And yeah, and he fell all the way to the third. And by all accounts, He's fine. It was injury concerns. He's been playing. He's been practicing. No concerns there. But then, in the draft, they also traded for A.J. Brown. Yeah. I mean, what a huge get. Yeah, I mean, this is really the the, the sparkling item uh, to note because now you've got an equally powerful weapon across um, from Devonta Smith. Yeah. You have the Eagles have been calling them, you know, receiver 1A and 1B. Because yeah. that, that's what you have. You know, Devontae Smith is Deshaun Jackson with better work ethic. Yeah. And A.J. Brown is that classic, like, go over the middle, get the ball, get the yards after the catch. Like, yep. possession type guy. And he's tough. He's got the size. But he also has the athleticism. They're going to be a fierce combo. Then you flip to the other side. Defense. They bring in Kaiser White, linebacker. They bring in linebacker defensive end hybrid, Hassan Reddick. They bring in secondary help in a big way, cornerback James Bradbury, who kind of hovers around that like top 10, top 15 corner spot, you know. So him and Darius Slay, you have two potential top 10 cornerbacks. I mean, that's a really. <laughs> that's never happened in Eagles history. That hasn't happened since Lito Shepard. <laughs> yeah, And Lito. Sheldon Brown. <laughs> Lito. Remember that when yeah. our secondary always used to be feared. But then everybody's like, what about the, what about the safeties? What about the safeties? Brings us to this week. The Eagles uh, traded for cornerback safety uh, hybrid Chauncey Gardner Johnson. Yep, uh, from the Saints. And didn't have to give up that much. No, it was what was it like a fifth and something and a like, swap of six round picks and something. Yeah, it was very very cheap. So he wanted a bigger contract. He's one of the best nickel corners in the league. Um, a, he's put up some good numbers. He's been a contributor on the Saints defense. He wanted a better contract. And the Saints just didn't have the room for it. So instead of cutting him, they tried to make the most of it and trade him. The vibe that I'm getting here, he was a nickel corner. They are officially moving him to safety. It's very similar to another Saints defensive back who we signed many years ago. And everyone was like, I don't know. This guy's like a third a third tier safety. Malcolm Jenkins. Yeah. Right? It's got right. like eerily similar vibes to it. Yep. They talk about his versatility. He can play in the slot. He can play over top. You know, he's not going to be able to play, like, single high safety and, like, patrol the entire field. He d I don't think he has the speed for that. But he's big enough to match up with those interior receivers and create mismatches there. And he's still rangy enough where he can, you know, play zone over the top. Maybe not the whole field by himself, but, you know, maybe like a two-safety set. Um, so versatility is the key because – with so many more offenses coming out in those three wide receiver sets. You and four. And four wide receiver sets. <laughs> you need a ton of depth there. Yeah. I mean, there there are some offenses. Uh, Green Bay, they'll line up with, with nobody in the backfield. They're yeah. Like, what? What are you yeah, doing? Yeah, four or five wide. Yeah. It's, and that's becoming more and more common. It's a pass first league. So now you have Gardner Johnson who can play safety, who can play nickel corner. That is a huge positive for the Eagles like yep. I, I think it's kind of understated how if he pans out the way we think he will how big of a positive that will be so you look at all those additions and really the only hole that I can see on the team the only question mark really is still the biggest one Jalen Hurts yep this is his uh, make it make it or break it year. And he literally has every single other piece around him. They revamped the linebackers. They revamped the secondary. The offensive line is coming back as one of the best in the league. They got they got weapons. They got weapons. They they got the you know the counterpiece to Devontae Smith. They still have 
a top five-ish tight end in uh, what's his face Dallas, Dallas Goddard. Goddard. Yep. Like literally, they have a running back by committee. They're okay. I'm still waiting for Miles Sanders to break out. Um, but they get the job done. And Boston Scott still slays against the Giants Boston, for some reason. At least two games a year <laughs> for some reason. Um, he's the giant killer. <laughs> so they have no. That that's the th- that's what I'm saying. They have every other piece. Yeah. Every other piece. They just got to go get it now. They got to get it done. Yep. It's it's the it's the story with Jalen Hurts. And uh, Tua Tagovailoa. It, it's yeah. they, they they have no excuse to not put up ten wins this year, right? Unless they get minimum, hurt or something. Minimum. If they get hurt, that's different. But they should be looking at ten ten and seven records easily. Yeah. And if they don't, then that's the sign. I don't I don't think they get big es- contracts. But especially the Eagles with our division. Like if Tua, they got the Bills eh. and the Patriots. Uh, Patriots are on. I hate to say it. Patriots are on a down year. They're not going to go anywhere. They it's have the Jets. Be, That's the, the Jets are going to win that division, <laughs> no, according no. to everything out there. No, apparently. Uh-uh. no, Jets, uh-uh. get, get out of here. Yeah, but when you compare their division to our division, I think our division still wins. I, I, so I guess this is an interesting toss-up. Who is under more pressure, Tua or, or Jalen? So, honestly. Because I would say it's Tua. Tua's got Tyree Kill. If you can't if you can't connect with Tyreek Hill, you're out of the NFL. Yeah, come on, like, and 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 so they've, and, they've, and they've, this always gets me a little bit too because they've been like Miami has been posting like all these highlights of him throwing to to Tyreek Hill in practice and the game against the Eagles in the preseason. Like, yeah. whoa, like uh, it does it doesn't count. Doesn't it count. was yeah. Hold on, it was preseason. Like, and De- the Eagles had their third stringers out De- in that. Detroit Lions went four and zero in the yeah. preseason before they went zero and sixteen in the yeah. regular season. Yeah. So, you can't the, really the, put the much stock 20, in that. 2011 preseason champions. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever year that was. Um, so I'll say this. Two is under a lot of pressure. I actually think Hurts is under more because when you take into account the fact that Jalen Hurts, I think, has a better roster surrounding him. Jalen Hurts is in a larger market, larger football market. And Jalen Hurts has a weaker division to play against. Yes, Dallas is there, but I take the Bills over Dallas any day. Yes, the Commanders and the Giants are there. I take the Patriots over either of them any day. Yeah, Tua gets to feast on the Jets, but I think overall our division is weaker. I think Jalen Hurts has more going for him that if he falters, it's a bigger fall than if Tua. Tua really only has Tyreek Hill. Yes, Tyreek Hill is a top three wide receiver, but that's that's it. No, they, they got some other weapons some, too. But Compare the rosters. Compare the 53s against each other. Which one do you take in Madden? You boot up Madden 2023 up. right now. Which roster do you pick if you're just some random, you're some random nobody from like a different country. You don't know American football. Which roster are you taking? Hmm. I mean, I guess you do. Uh, I guess you do Eagles, but like, see, but th- that's the thing though, is like, the doesn't that mean it's more pressure? I. Th- there's less room for – I guess what I'm saying is there's less room for him to make excuses. Like if two is like, oh, well, we have nobody's at running back. Our offensive line is so-so. Like the Eagles, you can't say that. You have the best offensive line. You have two starting wide receivers. You have a top five tight end. There's literally mm. no wiggle room. You might, you, but, you might be right, but I, I, I think two is Tua, right up there. So Tua has a longer – Tua came to the league earlier than Hurts. So he has – right? Mm. I, I don't know. They might have came together. No. Well, because when was Tua? Tua, t- Tua was the year. Uh, Tua was the year that the the whole debacle when there was like six quarterbacks taken, wasn't it? Wasn't it that year? I'm gonna check right now on. I'm, I may now. I'm, now I may be getting my draft history mixed up. Yeah, Tua's been in the in the league for a while. I thought. I I may well, be wrong though. I'm I checking. think it was that year where there was like six different. Cause that wasn't that like Josh Rosen got traded. Like it was like eight. It was like six. Or I don't know. Now I'm getting confused. Wait, really? Maybe. Oh, maybe this is his third year. Yeah, I think it's his third year. So I don't know. I, I'm huh. Basically, I put Jalen Hurts and Tua in the same boat. In the same in the same category. That yeah. they they have been surrounded. Th- their their organizations went out of their way to give them weapons and say it's now time for you to prove it. I don't want to hear any more excuses. You know, you, 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 you can only blame the front office for so long. 
and you're coming up on the end of your your rookie contract. So at some point, we either have to make a decision. Do we sign you to the big guaranteed BS $200 million contract, or do we just let you go and we start fresh? And next season's draft is supposed to be pretty heavy on quarterbacks. I think they're expecting – I think Mel Kuyper said there's going to be six or seven quarterbacks drafted in the first 50 picks. Wow. Yeah. That's so, crazy. Um, this is actually, actually, to be honest with you, it's a really a, a bulletin board notice for all, all the quarterbacks. Oh, absolutely. Because if you're not, another one would probably be uh, Jared Goff. This might be it. Because uh, uh, every Car- Carson Wentz, too. Carson Wentz, like, another one. Yeah, I mean, you 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 know, you don't yeah. have to you don't have to put up with mediocre quarterbacks anymore. So you know what? You're right. They came to the league the same year. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Why does it feel like two has been around so much longer than Hertz? <laughs> I guess because he had that wacky year where they were going on and off between him and uh, Ryan uh, Fitzpatrick. Because they both have only played 2020 and 2021. Yep. Like unless I'm missing something. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, Tua had that weird year where they were going back and forth between him and Fitzmagic. Yeah, it feels like a century ago. <laughs> yeah. But um but yeah, they're both definitely in the hot seat. There's a lot of like you said, a lot of hot seat quarterbacks. Yeah. I, I don't think anybody is really safe because either they are decrepitly old or they're in a situation like Hertz or or Tua. Yeah, you know, there's very few. I could think of like maybe a handful. Matt Ryan, another one. Colts. He better He's getting Jim, up there. Yeah. Jim Irsay, boy, th- he must be one of the worst football bosses to work for because he literally saw Carson Wentz and was like, all right, get rid of him. I've had enough of him. One yeah. year. One year, yeah. One year. I had enough of him. Yeah. Boy, I, Matt Ryan's walking into that. They don't They don't win that division. Oof. It's going to be tough. Yeah. So, there's yeah, there's a lot of interesting hot, hot seat quarterbacks, especially with this upcoming draft coming out. In 2023, where, where there's supposed to be a lot of quarterback prospects, teams are just like I don't. I don't need to sit behind a, a mediocre quarterback anymore. No. I can just hit the reset button, and, and you know the next time there's a a quarterback heavy draft. You know, I saw a a post on Reddit. It didn't have many upvotes. It was very. It was kind of unpopular. But this person was suggesting that that's Howie's new strategy. He was saying that. Howie Roseman doesn't get enough credit for doing what he's done and still positioning the team in a favorable way for a quarterback-heavy draft. Yeah. Because they're basically arguing that— 50-50. Either way it goes, they have a plan. Right. And this person was saying, what if that's just what the strategy is in the NFL going forward? Like, you try and find a rookie quarterback. You try and make something happen in those first four or five seasons. If it doesn't work, you get him out of there. You trade him for a first— and you just reboot. Yeah. Kind of treat them like like colleges would. Yeah. You know, a four year you try to win in a four year span. Yeah. That might be the the future going forward. We, we've talked about it before. If it's not Tom Brady, it's usually a quarterback who's on a first year or a bridge type contract. Yeah. But in, we all know Tom past. Brady's going to win this year. <laughs> Cuz it's, it's well, an you've even pointed, year. You've pointed out the <laughs> It's an even year. Yeah. Yeah, cuz of course Tom Brady would have that many rings we can justify this. <laughs> yeah, for those that don't know, 20 uh, 2016, Brady w- Brady has the comeback o- o- over the Falcons. That hor- uh, horrible choke job. Man. 2017 was the Eagles. 2018 was the boring game against the Rams yep. that they won. 2019 uh, was um, they didn't whatever it was. They didn't was win it? that one. Yeah, was that Chiefs? I mean, that was Chiefs year. It may have been the Chiefs. Yeah, yeah they didn't win that one. 2020 is. is Brady's first year with the Buccaneers, he wins that, and then last year was technically 2021, and the Rams win that one. So according to the jumps, it's 2022. It's the Brady's Brady has to win again to keep the the streak going. It's his time <laughs> again. It's his time because he's not going to retire unless he wins the Super Bowl that season. Like I think he would or have, someone puts him out of his misery or someone put yeah like someone like Joe Thies is his yeah. I still cannot believe. Nobody has just like just laid him out, you know, because football is one of those games where if somebody crawls under your skin, you could you, re- you know, I mean, th- there are levels, <laughs> you know, it, it's a very fast game. Things happen, you know, whoops, you know, just a quick 
But so you know what? I've always thought that too, and this is why I don't play sports because I would be that type of person. <laughs> 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 because I and I watch Dallas. I'm like, why don't they just like grab like in the dog pile? They just like grab their hand and just like you know bend their, bend their fingers so they can't hold the ball or whatever. But the reality of it is, is that these guys are all friends. Like we, I think our rivalries are stronger than their rivalries. They don't care. Yeah. It's yeah, all a job. Yeah, that's that's the reality. Because they all went to the same schools. They all, you know, get traded from team to team. They have the same coaches, the same agents. Um, they hang out during the off seasons. So a lot of players also now have grown up watching Brady. Like, think of it that way. Yeah. Brady started in, what, 2000? Yeah. So now players coming into the league at 21, 22, literally grew up their entire life watching Tom Brady. They're not going to lay him out. They're yeah, not. They're not gonna do. Like Tom Brady is literally invincible on the football field. Yeah, it's 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 unfair. It's very it's very frustrating. Somebody, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to say somebody should just level him out, but I I can't believe. Some, Are you nobody... like trying to order a hit on Tom Brady? What's happening? I don't here? know. I, like, Are you like making like like veiled like mafia like threats? Like yeah, somebody should just you know. Yeah, I'm not saying. I'm not saying you know, you know but, but maybe you know, right. Yeah. Uh, of course, nobody should go after I'm Brady. But I'm maybe. just saying, some of these fields are very poor playing surfaces. It would be a shame if you were to <laughs> step the wrong way. Yeah, you right. Know? You know you what know? I mean? Right, like Washington. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, by the way, FedEx Field, worst field, and they're saying it's going to be the most expensive place to buy a beer in the NFL. There's why would you go there? Why, why, yeah. you, why, why are you, you fans of Washington? Uh, the Commanders? Why? Why, why are you a fan of Bad why? name, bad field. Bad beer. Bad owner. Bad owner. Why, why get are you out. a Get out. Get out of Dodge. No, don't do it. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's only like a three-hour drive to Philly. Come yeah. on. Come on up. We'll Come take, on. We'll, yeah. take, we'll take some refugees. Yeah. Why? Why would you subject yourself to this torment? <laughs> yeah, right? I was actually digging Washington team football for a little bit. I was like, you know what? Leave it like that. It's It, it, it was silly. It was great. It almost sounds like, like it, you know, how I imagine, like, these leagues first started. They're just calling, like, teams after the city name, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Like, go back to the, the olden days kind of thing, you know? I wish they would have kept it. They should have. Commanders is stupid. It, it, it's not going to flow right. No. But, and they're, and uh, uh, by the way, and they're going to keep the same theme song, the same, the same rally song, but they're just going to replace Redskins with Commanders. So it's like, hail to the Commanders? Like, what? That's weird. It doesn't... It, uh, very nationalistic. Washington go four and thirteen, and I don't want to hear another peep from you. All right, so <laughs> there you go. I think that one. AMC's will pissing me off. The commanders are pissing him off. Apparently, it was a very angry segment. Yeah. So you know what? I think that's a sign we need to take uh, a break before we get into the entertainment entree and the non-fortune cookie odd news, which are coming up right after the break. Don't go anywhere. We're live tonight here for this episode of the Crispy Noodle Podcast. Don't go anywhere. Ready for the weekend? Happy Friday. Hi, my name's Marie, and I'm an artist who's been making Happy Friday doodles every week for over seven years. And now you can own my art collection in this volume one and volume two art series. These doodles span across multiple themes, yearly festivities, various countries, languages, and more. Both coffee table books have something for everyone and are the perfect conversation starter or gift for a friend. Really, anyone who enjoys a good weekend. Available on Amazon, Ingram, Book Baby, Barnes & Noble, and more. Visit happyfridaydoodles.com forward slash books and get your copies today. Let's celebrate the best day of the week. Happy Friday. If you go to Taco Bell at three in the morning, this is this is what you're gonna get. Yeah, that clip so. is already coming into play. <laughs> yes, already. It. So there you go. Stop. What? What happened? 
the thing yeah, went on. Well, well, how did that turn on? That I weird. don't know. The fart sound. <laughs> the fart sound <laughs> turned uh, Amazon on? I think the what? fart sound turned on what? my Echo. What the I hell? don't know. It turned on. What are you doing, Jeff Bezos? What are Jeff you into? Bezos, he's listening to fart sounds. <laughs> he's listening to our <laughs> fart sta- sounds. Oh, my I, God. I changed the trigger word to fart. <laughs> <laughs> I got to fart at it now. <laughs> I don't know what happened. That's really awkward. You're going to have to... Excuse me. Excuse me. (laughs) How can I help you? (laughs) You may need some (laughs) bells. Do you want me to automatically order you uh, (laughs) (laughs) Pepto-Bismol? I don't know why. I don't know why I'm talking to it solely through farts now. It actually, you, you fart into it. Fart once for yes and twice for no. No, no, no. Actually, you fart into the device, and then yeah. Amazon can determine what, oh, what, what you, medicine you need. Oh, right. Wow. <laughs> That's next level right there. Or what you've been eating and what you want to reorder. <laughs> oh. <laughs> huh. I detect Cheetos. <laughs> would, you like, <laughs> would you like to subscribe? Would you like a bulk order of <laughs> bulk Cheetos? Order. Ooh, yes, please. <laughs> Cheetos ordered. Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> that story took a turn. Yeah. Cheetos ordered. <sighs> okay. All right. There you go. The latest from Jeff Bezos and in, in Amazon. It's amazing technology, I tell you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're back here on the Crispy Noodle. We are doing this episode live, and uh, we totally forgot about... (laughs) A news story that broke literally like three hours ago, yeah. and that's how good we are at our jobs. We were so upset with the whole um, Jalen Hurts versus Tua argument that we totally forgot and buried the lead that yeah. we got rid of uh, Jalen Rager. Yeah, we finally are done with the Jalen Rager saga. Uh, the and Eagles, the J-Jaw saga, too. The J-Jaw saga, yeah. I, I, I hope that... This really marks the end of drafting wide receivers, just awful wide receivers way before they should be. Apparently, our s- scouting crews are good at every other po- uh, uh, every other position, but not wide receivers. No. So just trade for wide receivers at this point. Right, exactly. Just pull an A.J. Brown. <laughs> I mean, it's worked in the past. Yeah. But yeah, they traded Jalen Rager to the Vikings to play <laughs> alongside the wide receiver who's taken immediately after him and has had a much better career. Yep, that we whiffed on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still annoyed about that. Yep. Justin Jefferson. And then J Jaw goes to Seattle and then he gets cut. Yeah. Immediately. <laughs> so interesting. All right. Anyway. You know what? We're just not gonna focus on the past. We're no. gonna move forward. That's right. Yeah. Always looking we got a good season. I think we got a good season coming up. Uh so we'll have some fun with that when the NFL season starts next week. Uh, but right now, we need to move away from sports and go to the part of the show where we go over some movie and TV and video game news. It is time for the entertainment entree. And now, the latest in movies. The Simpson guy writes to movies. Dear Die Hard, you rock. Especially when that guy was on the roof. Music. I know what that is. That's music. Video games. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite store on the Citadel. Celebrities. You really know Warren Beatty? Yes, I do. I took a leak next to him once at the Golden Globes. And more. You are the all singing, all dancing crap of the world. This is the entertainment entree. All righty. And uh, for this first part of the entertainment entree, we're going to go over the segment where Mike is going to let you know what you should keep an eye out for this upcoming weekend with movies, TV, and video games. It is time for Mike's This Week in Entertainment. All right, Mikey, what do you got? All right, first up, This Week in Entertainment. First, go see a movie. Any movie, it doesn't matter. Just see them all. 
This Saturday is National Cinema Day. Theaters across the country are charging $3 for tickets. I got tickets to go see Jordan Peele's uh, latest movie, Nope. Bought them on Fandango. The convenience and service fees were more than the actual tickets. That's ridiculous. But still, two tickets, only nine seventy five if you buy them online. I mean, you can't beat that deal. There it's you go. cheaper than a single movie ticket. So go to see any movie Saturday, all day, $3, everywhere. You are actually you. making the recommendation. That's right. This is the first This Week in Entertainment where you get to decide. I'm not telling you what to watch. You're telling you what to watch. Whoa. Whoa. But if you're not going to the movies, you have to do what I say and watch <laughs> The Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power on Amazon you can't Prime. tell me what to do. I can tell everybody what to do because this show is going to be really, really cool. Rings of Power is a new story in the Lord of the Rings universe separate from either movie trilogy. Instead, it borrows heavily from Tolkien's expanded works of the universe, such as The Silmarillion. It's set thousands of years before The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings in an era of peace when the Rings of Power were first created by the Dark Lord Sauron. It already has really positive reviews online. Um, I'm really excited because the budget is absolutely massive. They are treating this show with, I think it seems, the proper respect and the proper, um, you know, uh, um, value, gravitas. Yeah. So... I'm really excited for it. Apparently, Jeff Bezos' kids told him not to F it up. Um, so it's just he that. He has kids? Apparently, he does. I was reading an interview. He's like, yeah, my kids told me not to F it up. I'm like, not the fact that his kids told him that, but the fact that he has kids. I was like, wow. Yeah, that's weird. Um, but no, people are really excited about this. And uh, Hello, Papa. Hello. <laughs> like, are they robots? Yeah. Uh, hello, Father. Yeah, like I can't imagine him actually having like human feelings. No, <laughs> d- no, because he's a super villain. Yeah. He's a Bond villain. Hello, Papa. Hello, son. <laughs> what is your opinion of Lord of the Rings? Father, I require sustenance. I need entertainment to watch. <laughs> Please make billion dollar TV show. Ha ha ha. I will subjugate more factory workers. <laughs> <laughs> we must raise more capital. Fun. <laughs> That's what's funding. Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. Go check it out on Amazon Prime. I'll definitely be watching it. Uh, Let me know what you guys think. And then in video games, it seems like Naughty Dog caught a case of the Rockstar plague here because just like Grand Theft Auto V, The Last of Us Part 1 is coming out on its third console. Yeah. Released on PlayStation 3, re-released on PlayStation 4, re-re-released on PlayStation 5. Um, I know it's one of the best games of all time, but three releases on three consecutive consoles? Yeah. Is, I mean, what's what's going on here? Yeah, is there really going to be anything that much different? They upgraded all the visuals. They improved the enemy AI, but there's no gameplay changes. It's not like they added the new weapons or abilities or tactics from Last of Us Part Two. It's the same levels, the same, yeah. the same tactics, the same gameplay, just smarter AI and better visuals. Now, they did put a lot of production value into it. Um, It looks it, it sounds it, from what I understand, but again, same game from 10 plus years ago, so buy it your own discretion. If you haven't played it yet, definitely go get it. If you have played it, Eh. just replay the, the former ones. Yeah, I think you're fine. If you're looking for something new, though, check out Inscription coming to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. This is a game that has been hailed critically. It combines deck-building gameplay, so you're building a deck of cards to play with, with escape room elements and a horror story narrative with lots of mind-bending twists. So it's taking a couple different genres, mashing them up. It's gotten rave reviews on PC. Really excited to try it on PlayStation. It's one of those critical indie darlings, so go check out inscription coming to PlayStation consoles this week. And that's what we're looking forward to this week in entertainment. All right. Thank you for that segment this week in entertainment. All right. We got a couple of uh, quick breaking uh, hit uh, hits to do with, with three different news stories. Uh, so first one, Sony, uh, you know, we are big PlayStation fans, obviously got PlayStation five. So not only did I get a PlayStation five, but Sony is also making moves as well. Yeah. So rich made a big purchase and Sony made a big purchase as well. They have acquired a 14% stake 
in From Software, the developers of hits like Elden Ring and Dark Souls. Um, this is big because those franchises, Elden Ring, Dark Souls, um, I think I think those are the, the two big ones. I think there's another one in there. I don't really play them, but lots of PlayStation gamers love yeah, Elden games. Ring is a big one. Oh, my God. You see it mentioned online so much. Yep. Rave reviews. People go crazy for it. And this deal really is bolstering a relationship that's always been there from software um, has a very tight knit relationship with PlayStation puts out all their games on PlayStation consoles PlayStation always features them in all of their big reveal showcases and you know puts those games you know front and center um, so this is just bolstering that relationship and really making sure that those franchises stay on Sony consoles because this past year, there's been so many acquisitions. This is kind of like a fear purchase yeah. where they're like, we need to have some sort of stake in this company to prevent other companies, i.e. Microsoft, from just buying them outright. So yeah, it, 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 this is definitely a move to counter Microsoft. It's very very much, uh, you know, corporate uh, positioning, if you will. Right, it's, a, it's all strategy, yeah, it's a, just to make sure that it's a shame that like these big companies have to like buy out all these smaller companies just to, you know, further consolidate the the game market. But that's the world we live in now. So it's a good thing for fans of those games that they will get to continue playing them on PlayStation consoles. But PlayStation's not just looking to the console space; they're also looking to the mobile space because they also purchased mobile game developer Savage Game Studios. And PlayStation and Sony are officially creating PlayStation Studios mobile division. This is actually pretty big news because now they've already branched into PC games. You know, you can play God of War and uh, Horizon Zero Dawn and other games on PC. Um, and this furthers that trend by now bringing PlayStation properties to mobile devices. So they're bringing new and existing IPs to the mobile space, and they're kicking things off with, I think they announced they're making a AAA, um, massively multiplayer action game for mobile devices. Um, you know, it's a huge market. There's billions of phones out there, billions of dollars of mobile yep. games. Who, who isn't on their phone? Exactly. Who doesn't have, like, I have, like, a hundred games on my phone that I've played, like, five minutes of and then immediately forgot about, you know? <laughs> Um, but like it's a huge space, t lots of microtransactions, a lot of you know quick, small like one, two dollar games. How many like one dollar games have you just like you know bought without thinking about it? Yeah, kind of thing, you know. Um, so it's a big move for Sony. Um, they are assuring players that this is just an additive type deal. They're adding to the catalog. They're not replacing current offerings. They're not moving out of the console space to focus on mobile. It's not like we're going to get less God of War or less Last of Us, clearly. <laughs> um, no, we'll just repackage we'll it. We'll just repackage it. Maybe they'll put that on mobile. Yeah. Who knows? Um, no, this is purely an, an additive move, as, as they call it. So Sony making a lot of, I think, for fans of PlayStation consoles, positive moves. Uh, if you're not a fan of PlayStation consoles, obviously this is kind of like a big, you know, who cares, well, you know, whatever. But if you're a fan well, of PlayStation, but I think it 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 uh, is this just another sign that this is all just a big uh, acquisition war. They're yeah. all trying to Microsoft, Nintendo, Sony. They're all just trying to purchase as many video game companies as they can before they all get bought up. Absolutely. And we haven't even covered all of them. Sony has bought a bunch of companies this past year. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft has just bought the biggest, but Sony's been buying little studios left and right. And yeah, it's like you said, it's just all about consolidating that power. Yep. Um, but moving along from Sony, we do want to get to another topic here, uh, a property that's very near and dear to us. Bioshock. Yep. Occasionally it pops up. We talk about a potential fourth game. We talk about, uh, you know, all other stuff relating to Bioshock. Uh, occasionally yep, definitely one of our favorite games. Absolutely. And occasionally on this podcast over the years, we've mentioned the possibility of a Bioshock movie. Yep. Which has been stuck in development hell for years since the game first came out in 2007. It's been stuck in movie yeah. development hell. Uh, traditional movie studios don't want to do it. No. They don't want to do it because they want a PG-13 rating because it's a video game. It's a kid's toy, and they don't want the R rating. 
which Bioshock needs. It needs it needs an R rating. I, I'm not one of those people where it's like, oh, only R rated movies are good. No, it needs an R rating because the main thing of the universe is like you're disemboweling children to get a vital magical chemical. Yeah. You know, that's like the currency. That, in that can't world. be PG thirteen. Like, it's really you know, like maybe they could adapt it, but like the the essence of the game is not the violence, but the the. I thought it was a nice boating simulator. Exactly. <laughs> um, no, it, it's the darker side of human nature. It's a dystopian story. You can't pretty up a dystopian story. No. Now. <laughs> and neither should you. No, you should. <laughs> no, that's more dystopian. Yeah. Than embracing the R rating of a dystopian story. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little thought nugget to to chew yeah, on. Yeah. Little meta there. Yeah. Uh, but where the traditional film studios failed, Netflix swoops in. Earlier this year, Netflix announced they were going to make a Bioshock movie. If anybody can do it, Netflix. They don't yeah. care about scary content. Um, but still, in the back of my mind, why we didn't talk about it at the time, I was like, okay, you know, I'll believe it when I see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we, we, we've been... Uh, we've been let down let before. Let down a lot, yeah. Yeah. But now they've announced both a director... And a writer for the project. Ah, the French champagne has always been celebrated for its excellence. Oh, if only it was Orson. <laughs> that would have fit, really. Yeah, uh, you guys, you guys go over there. Uh, I don't know. Ah, the French champagne. It's always been celebrated for its excellence. <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> and, you, one of the aspects of the Bioshock game was you drink wine to heal yourself, wasn't it? Uh, yes. So Orson's very familiar in that. Ah, the French champagne. It's always been celebrated for its excellence. So, I mean, he made movies in that era kind of when bioshock took place yeah it would have fit it would have fit but unfortunately he is no longer with us no no he will not be gracing uh the script pages of bioshock instead we're getting francis lawrence directing he uh worked on projects like i am legend the hunger games uh and slumberland not sure what that one is but i am legend and the hunger games he's got some dystopian post-apocalyptic chops here yep uh so that's really good to see that type of pedigree and then on the writing side, Michael Green will write the script. Um, I think is that supposed to be Logan? I think I'm, I think I have a typo in here. <laughs> Loga. <laughs> it may be Loga. Loga. I don't know. Uh, but he's also done Blade Runner twenty forty nine and American Gods. So again, I liked American Gods. It's you a did, shame. yeah, yeah. It's a shame that uh, the movies there was it stars didn't. Yeah, no, they didn't continue with no. it. Um, but seeing these two. Um, attached to the project, uh, and having watched uh, some of their previous work, what do you think, Rich? Is this heading in the right direction? This I would say it's this definitely project? looking more promising now. Yeah. Um, I think these are two uh, two people you would want to be backing a dystopian movie like Bioshock. Um, and Netflix, you know, Netflix gets stuff done. Yeah, you know, I mean, they've been just churning out con- content between um, Stranger Things and uh, the Sandman, and there's been a lot of reasons to go back to Netflix this year. Yeah, Netflix. You know me; I I always like Netflix properties. Their original shows are usually, at least the ones that I that I stay focused on, are usually pretty good. Not the reality stuff, but you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I I think it's a step in the right direction. Yeah, I I really like this marriage of of creative minds here between Netflix and this director and writer who are announced a lot of experience with similar type of properties. I mean, Blade Runner 2049. I mean, that's that's a great example there. And The Hunger Games and I Am Legend. Uh, I Am Legend, yeah. That, that's good, you I, know, uh, that good basis movie, for this. You know, uh, it wasn't exactly, like, greatest of all time, but, y- you know, definitely some powerful stuff there and um, really nailed that eerie, creepy, like, desolate vibe and... I think they're going to bring a lot of interesting, um, a lot of interesting perspective to this project. So really yep. exci- excited to see where it goes. Yep. Uh, speaking of Netflix, though, yeah. there's another thing that Netflix is doing uh, besides the Bioshock movie. Uh, they're yeah. adding a new tier. Yes. So if you are interested in watching the Bioshock movie, but you don't have quite enough money 
to afford a Netflix subscription, you can pretty soon get an ad-supported subscription tier. Now, I <laughs> declare bankruptcy! <laughs> so if you had to declare... If you had to declare bankruptcy... <laughs> yeah, this is your tier. I declare bankruptcy! <laughs> so if that happened to you, this is your, this is your Netflix tier. That's right. <laughs> So, uh, you two. I took that from the depths of the soundboard, yeah. That was nice. <laughs> you got a, like a good uh, office clip from Michael Scott there. Um, so, they've been rumored to have this ad supported tier for a while now, but it's, it's finally coming. Um, they're still not sure exactly when, um, but it's definitely in the works, will be happening. And we have some details here about what exactly this means. So,. Uh, first things first, cost. If you want the ad-supported tier, it's going to cost you somewhere between 7 and $9 a month. And personally, I think this pricing sucks. Now, I don't mind some other, you know, lots of other streaming services charge money and you still get ads. That's not the thing that I'm upset with. What I'm upset with is that Netflix continues to be substantially more expensive than other similar services. Yeah. Because what's Hulu and the and their ad supported plan? I think the ad supported plan is like I think it is right right around this this cost. But what annoys me is that Netflix has like if they introduce this at nine dollars, then their regular plan costs ten dollars. I guess they want to incentivize people to pay the extra dollar to get rid of the no, ads. No, they're they're gonna have to. They're going to jack everything. up. You think they're going to jack up the price? They're probably going to raise everything at this rate. So you th- you think that's the strategy? Nine dollars for ad it, free. Then all of a sudden it's fifteen, or it's nine dollars for ads, fifteen for maybe no ads, and then what twenty five for the four K? Because they're still the only service that charges extra for four K. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. I I, I would ex- I would be in the camp to expect a price increase for all, all the rates. That would be really. Really frustrating. Yeah, but they're yeah. look. They got to find. They got to fund the Bioshock movie. They do, and and that brings up an, an interesting sort of side tangent to this because something that I've been hearing a lot recently is, can Netflix actually survive the streaming wars? And hear me out now. You think it's ridiculous because it's Netflix. How can Netflix fail? They they're the ones that started it. They can fail pretty easily because properties like Peacock and Paramount Plus and HBO, they have their own content. They are backed by traditional studios. Par- databases and databases right. and databases. Right, because Peacock has NBC Universal. Paramount is Paramount and CBS. And then you have, of course, Disney Plus with all of the Disney catalog. You have... HBO, which is part of Warner Brothers. And Discovery now. And Discovery. So you have all of that content. Netflix was never a studio. They didn't start making shows and movies until House of Cards. Yep. Even Paramount. Was, yeah. Has CBS. CBS. Paramount has CBS. And also Paramount, like the movie company. Yep. Amazon has MGM. Netflix is the, I think, the only service that is not backed by a traditional library of existing content uh, other if, than adam sandler if they don't pay <laughs> and other than, right but but here's the thing if they don't pay to license material or they don't pay to make it they don't have it yep so so it's not a far-fetched idea it's not a far-fetched idea and people i keep seeing articles pop up every once in a while it's like how long does netflix actually have because now you have people growing irritated with password sharing fees and now ads, and you have you have to pay extra for four uh, k. Like at what point? And now they're losing subscribers. I don't want to sound alarmist, but like, could we potentially start to see the demise of Netflix if people get too irritated with a service, or grow too tired of, you know, the lack of quality content because now it's mostly reality TV with a few really really good show sprinkled in there but the vast majority are like blown away or like is it cake <laughs> yeah is it cake yep which i ha- i refuse to watch i refuse <laughs> i've given it on some of them but i'm not watching is it cake i'm not doing it okay have you 
I did watch a couple episodes. Is, was it Ra- cake? Rachel? Rachel made me watch it. Was it cake? Some were and some weren't. Weren't. Oh man. Yeah. It I was, don't want to watch something that's not cake. Yeah. I only want some cake. Some things are not cake. Damn. But some things are. Ooh. <laughs> so, but, I mean, yeah. you know, all in all, I, I don't think Netflix is going to fail tomorrow or next month or next year. No, but, but it could be in the future. Yeah. Uh, well, here's something that's definitely not cake. Uh, we have to get to the third and final portion of the show. It is the non-fortune cookie odd news. We've been talking about cool and its uh, ramifications and how it applies to the hip scene. But maybe you could give us some examples now of the opposite of cool. Uncool. Just exactly what is uncool. My nipples look like milk studs. Holy shnikes. It's time for the non-fortune cookie odd news. It's not of this world. I don't know exactly what it is or what it's doing, but this is not human intelligence, okay? It's not human intelligence we're facing! How you doing? (laughs) See? I'm doing great. I don't make this stuff up. I'll take a pound of nuts. That's a lot of nuts! That'll be four bucks, baby! You want fries with that? <laughs> I've seen the celery dance across the baseball fields. You had me at meat tornado. No, 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 go past this. Past this part. In fact, never play this again. Okay! <laughs> uh, what, what does that mean? And now, it's time for the non-fortune cookie odd news. So, sit back. Get everything you need to get from the kitchen. Be sure and empty the bladders and go to the bathroom because you're in for hell, right? Ah! Woo, odd news. That's right, everyone. It's time for the non-fortune cookie odd news here in this segment. Rich researches the news, he reads the news, and I react to the news. He finds a weird, wacky story and keeps it hidden from me, which ensures that all of my reactions are my genuine gut reactions to hearing these stories for the very first time. I don't know what's about to happen, you guys don't know what's about to happen, and even Rich doesn't know what's about to happen because these stories always take us down wacky and wild paths, and I'm ready to get started. Where are we heading to? And Uh, why is it always Florida? Yeah. Now, who is this guy in Florida? It's Florida, and they're crazy. I realized you asked why, and I said, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) The answer is just yeah. So, yeah, we got Florida odd news here. Now, who is this guy in Florida? It's Florida, and they're crazy. Uh, I got two quick stories here. They're both, you know, the whole sentence kind of gives away the whole stories, but it is just fun to imagine with uh, both of these stories here. Uh, this is uh, a town called Imo- Imokali. I- okay. I M M O K A L E E. Imokali. I feel like this should be Hawaii or something. It sounds like sounds like a uh, Hawaiian word, word but no. Uh, I- Imokali. Imokali. Well, Weird. a Florida it has a regional airport though. Wow, there you go, stepping up. Yeah. Well, a Florida man from Immokali has been arrested after he fled from deputies while driving drunk in a golf cart on Friday night. Uh, According to the Collier County Sheriff's Office, uh, at around midnight, deputies were driving east on Lake Trafford Road when they tried to pull over a golf cart that was driving around with no lights on. (laughs) So, on an actual road, just driving around in circles. Woo! (laughs) This guy so dangerous. This guy loves his golf cart. Uh, the driver was identified as 24-year-old Alex uh, Acevedo. Okay. Uh, he saw the deputies and decided to take his beer cans and throw them at the cop car. Yeah. In my opinion, the only thing I can think of that's something like this is like Mario Kart. Like, <laughs> it's like throwing like uh, bombs or something. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, cops! The, the beer cans are the shells. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Take that! <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think they're as effective. Yeah, that's... <laughs> just, that's not how it works. <laughs> no. In fact, that's probably the worst possible thing he could Yeah, could've... you're actually giving them evidence that you've been drinking. <laughs> it's like, I wasn't drinking, there was a beer can. <laughs> yeah. I swear I'm not drunk, there was another beer can. Now, spin out of control. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Spin, oh, yeah. Spin into the river. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Should have had banana peels. 
peels. So that would have been perfect. Banana peels and, and uh, green shells. I, I think I'm going to, when I go he out. He can't have blue shells because he's in front. That's true. So do not get the blue shells. He got red shells, though, can't he? No, I think the red shells go forward. Oh, they only go forward? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it has to be the green shells. Oh, okay. <laughs> Those don't home in on players. I don't like them. Yeah. Well, that, he, he's just chucking them. So just, that is that is actually how you fire the green shells. You just fire them off real quick. Yeah. yeah. Ah, take that. <laughs> uh, this is this is Florida Mario Kart. <laughs> Instead of shells, it's beer cans. Yeah. And instead of uh, what other abilities are there? We got um, the mushroom for speed. That mushroom is speed. Still kind of works. The Maybe it's bath yeah. salts instead of mushrooms. Yeah, actually, that does kind of work for drug stories. Yeah. If we if we have uh, you know a drug story that tied into this racing, then then it would. Um, what other abilities? The star makes you invincible. That's that's cocaine. The the ghost makes you invisible and you steal an item. Hmm. What would that be? Yeah. Because most Florida criminals are naked, so they're like... Oh, uh, yeah, you're naked and you're stealing stuff, so that would be the ghost. If you're naked, you're invisible? Sure. <laughs> I think that works. We're, we're trying to run with this logic here. Uh, but uh, anyway, <laughs> that, that's the best we can come up with. That, that's what I'm going to go with uh, for Florida Mirror Cart. Anyway, uh, Acevedo sped down Titus Lane and pulled into a driveway where he began shouting... <laughs> for family members to quickly take the rest of his items. <laughs> so, so, what? take my shells. What is he carrying? He's like, quick, take these. <laughs> yes, hide the evidence. Oh, my God. Uh, he also threw his cell phone towards a man. <laughs> Apparently, that's something that also happened in the middle of all this. Just a, a random stranger? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not like a relative, just a man yeah. on the street? Yeah, that's what the police report says, yeah. Okay. Just, uh, yeah. Maybe that would be like a weird like side objective. Quick, deliver cell phone to Toad sitting on, at the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> just hurls his phone. He's like, I don't, I don't need this anymore. Yeah. Uh, well, eventually, uh, cops did catch up to him. They found that his breath smelled heavily of alcohol. I would say so. Uh, and he was struggling to keep his balance even while standing still. Yikes. Deputies even found more Corona beer cans inside the golf cart. How many cans does this guy, has this guy been yeah, drinking? That's a, I know. That's a lot. Like, he really must have been, like, finishing a case. Wow. Is, is he doing like a case race or something? Because he said, is this a golf cart or a go kart? Golf cart. OK, that has a little bit more room. At first, I thought he said go kart. I was like, there's no room in go karts for all of this. No. OK. He must have had a case, though, because that's the only way oh, I yeah. can. Because he was throwing them at the He's cops. chucking multiple cans and they find even he more. He threw some at the family. Hide these. <laughs> Good luck. And then they still found more in the golf cart. Yeah. So I don't know. He must have been trying to finish a case or something. Uh, Acevedo refused to do any f field sobriety test. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I, I think we I have really enough. I don't think he needs to do them. I, I think we have enough evidence here. Uh, yeah. Because the cops charged him with DUI and resisting arrest without violence. So he is in jail. But there you go. Florida Mario Kart. That was just going around in circles, throwing, throwing his shell cans. Yeah. All right, and then I got this other Florida odd news story here for you. Now, who is this f guy in Florida? It's Florida, and they're crazy. And uh, again, just it, this is another one of those funny ones. Just, just imagine it and enjoy. Uh, this one involves a Florida woman on Saturday night. Uh, so already right there, <laughs> you know things are going to get wild. Oh, yeah. Uh, so according to the Largo Police Department, uh, they said that uh, officers spotted a van that was swerving between lanes on East Bay Drive near Huntington Drive at 11 p.m. That's when they pulled over 33-year-old Tiffany Lynn Novak and claimed that they s noted numerous signs of impairment. Uh, so that's when they took her out of the car. Uh, she smelled like alcohol uh, and, was a and they were able to do a blood test on her. Uh, while searching her, that's when they found a small bag 
with a white powder substance uh. located underneath her breast in her bra. <laughs> By the way, I don't know if you noticed. I've noticed this is like a new like location now. Like people, they hide stuff. Women under, are, are under hiding it. things. Like they put their cell phone in there in the bra. They put yeah. some cash. Like I mean, I guess you can. I guess if it fits. You know, look, their pants don't have pockets. Look, yeah, l- look, we need to get to yeah brass we need, tacks. Here. We need to. So I don't even my care about the story wife, anymore. My wife complains about how there's no pockets. None of them have pockets in anything. We need to set the. Fashion industry straight. I don't know. Whoever's making these pants and I don't know whatever. who makes these decisions on pants. Whoever and makes these decisions, stop it. Because this is what it's leading to. Women are just putting you things know, in their bras. I'll I'll say this to all the guys out there. Uh my girlfriend gives me crap for liking cargo shorts. <laughs> I like cargo shorts. I, you, I like cargo shirts. But you know what? Cargo Shirts, cargo, Shirt, oh, cargo shirts, shorts. and shorts. <laughs> You're just covered in car, pockets. Car, yeah, I want pockets to everywhere. But this is the I point I'm getting at. I want to be able to have an inventory list that's as long as the one in video games. I want, yeah, I want to roll up somewhere and I want to be able to pull out all of my weapons and all of my yeah. health potions. Right. Because here's the thing: they don't have any pockets, so they give all their stuff to us to put in our infinite pockets of holding. Yes. You know. That, that, so that, I don't want to sh- hear I don't want to hear nothing about cargo shorts. They are the only reason that women can carry stuff and not be not have well, to carry a giant bag. But but we, I think we need to go to the fa- we need to get them their own pockets. Who is it? The fashion people? I don't know who we go to. The president, the fashion police, the, the, president? the president. I know we go right to Joe Biden. I don't we go know. Go straight to the man <laughs> yeah. at the top. <laughs> Listen, Mr. President, we have a very pressing matter we need to talk to you about. I had a hot pocket. <laughs> oh my God! Is that your impression of Biden? <laughs> no, no, is he dying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually my impression of just everybody at this rate. Orson Welles, Joe Biden. It's just every. That's everybody. I man. know he's old, but damn. <laughs> but Mr. President, there's a very pressing matter we need to discuss with you. Besides your health, apparently. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> health. Women have no pockets. Yeah. They can't carry stuff. They have to stuff yeah. stuff in their boobs. I once knew a girl named Pockets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Mr. President? <laughs> what was Pockets yeah. like? <laughs> no. I smelled her hair. It was nice. <laughs> this sure is creepy, Mr. President. <laughs> it wasn't back in the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> the era of hair smelling and gentle caressing. Yeah. What a great time to be alive. Last year, back oh. in 72, <laughs> I smelled a lot of girls' hair. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. I don't know either. Let me get back to the new story. <laughs> so, uh, she has no pockets. She has so no she pockets. So, she puts stuff in her bra under her boobs. Yes. And one of them is a small bag with trace amounts of a white powder substance. It's a pretty smart place to keep stuff, I guess, if, yep. you, don't, if you don't want it found. Uh, officers uh, arrested her and took the substance back into the police station where they tested that it was indeed cocaine. So, yeah, yeah this is sense. yep, this is uh, some heavy duty stuff here. So she's got some she's got some yayo underneath the, the, the Bresto. <laughs> so there you go. The Bresto. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also, uh, they were able to find with her uh, her blood, uh, her, her blood alcohol content. Was point one five, which is over three times the legal limit. So, wow. yeah, she's she's having a good night uh, with, with with this stuff here. Don't make me issue my ultimate four. Uh, when asked uh, why she was carrying the cocaine baggie in her bra, she says that quote, "I literally don't remember." <laughs> I mean, with the uh, the the alcohol there, yeah. you know. That makes sense. She probably doesn't remember. And then later on, she said, oh, no, this isn't mine. This Uh, I was literally holding for a friend. Classic. Classic. Oh, she was just being a good friend. A very, very thoughtful person. Oh, I'll hold it for you. Oh, oh, you don't have you don't have any room for your drugs. No, don't worry. I'll put them under my Here, reach over. (laughs) Put it underneath here. Nice and warm for you. I've got a sorting system underneath my left boob. Hey, God, where did I put that? Nope, not under there. Nope. <laughs> Which boob did I put it under? Which 
begs the question: Do girls do this to each other? I don't know. I should. I should get Nena on next week or something. Do we girls do what? Do they store stuff in each like, other's? Yeah, like, is this like a thing? Like, oh, I'm running out of room. Here, I, can you? I'm using both my boobs. Can I use <laughs> one of yours? <laughs> is this how it works? Do you do you rent out boob space? Like, how does it? <laughs> oh, that's unfair, man. Is there a communal boob space? Like, how does this work? That, that's unfair because, you know, the bigger ones, they got a lot of space. <laughs> Poor, poor the you know the itty bitty yeah, titty itty committees. Itty yeah, yeah, the they don't, yeah, they don't, they don't get don't. it. Uh, yeah, it's just the the big guys on top pushing down the little, p- the yeah. little people. Yeah, yeah. This not is, good. This is class warfare. This is class. <laughs> this is boob warfare. <laughs> you have the, the boob. You have the 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 have boobs and the have not boobs. Yeah, apparently, because that that is a strategic advantage. That is. That That's is not fair. You have more more holding space, more storage. <laughs> yeah. Don't things get sweaty, though? Like, I feel like... Yeah, right? Like, I'm sweating just, like, here. Yeah, I can't even imagine, like... Like... Very damp... I'm sitting, and I'm sweating. Yeah, very damp cocaine. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh. Horrible band name. <laughs> damp cocaine? Damp cocaine, yeah. <laughs> not, not good. Uh, so, uh, she was booked into the uh, Pinellas County Jail on charges of driving under the influence. Um, and she also apparently has a previous aggravated battery charge. So mm, this is not, not her good. first go around. No. So uh, she may be in jail for a little bit longer. I'm more interested in the boob storage, honestly. Yeah. Like the story's we, like whatever. I, I We need to get to the bottom of the, bottom of the boob storage. Yeah, because is that somewhat credible? Do girls just hide things for each other in each other's... How, Probably. How, how, do you, how do you broach that topic? Like... <laughs> It's weird because, like, so if you're just two people talking, like, oh, can you hold this for me for a second? And you assume they're going to hold it in your hands. <laughs> she, yeah, but just, like, she just goes whoop right just in. Whoop, just, yeah. Yep. Like, I don't know. My left one is for drugs. <laughs> That's you right. Go. You can't, you got to, yeah, you can't get them mixed up. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> you got to keep them organized. You got to have a system. You have to, have, right, you have to label stuff, you know, keep it nice and organized. Left is for drugs, right is uh, money. <laughs> That's right, yeah. 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 Maybe th- maybe actually name your 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 boobs one br- one drugs one boob or one one is drugs one is money. That's what I was trying to get. Meet my right boob money and my <laughs> left boob drugs. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how this works. I would be. There's, guy, we, there's not. There's no guy equivalent for this. No, uh-uh. no, no, no. There's not. No. You can put stuff in your underpants, I, maybe, but uh, it's not the same also, concept. Also, n- n- I don't. I don't know if I. W- if, if I had no, drugs, no, no. Didn't we have a story once? If I had drugs, I don't know if I want to give you my drugs. No, no. We had a story once. Oh, what? Where we some guy didn't some guy keep something in his in his foreskin? Oh, wasn't yeah. that a story once? Oh, yeah. Am I am I right? Or yeah. So there is he a kept, gu- he kept drugs. In there it. is a guy equivalent, but. What happens if you're circumcised? Oh, then you, did, then you really don't have any storage space. You're part of the itty bitty titty committee. Titty oh, committee yeah. So there you go. That's the the circumcised and the itty bitty titties. They're they together. Need the, they need the they need unite. to they need to unite and they need to petition the president for pockets. Yes. To balance the playing field with the big boob and the uncircumcised people. Yes. They have all of the bodily storage. Yes. The others do not. It's we not need, fair. There needs to be an immediate there's, article. There's a. There's a. There's there a. There a wealth, a, a a body storage wealth gap. There needs to be an immediate Article 6A meeting with the president. Yes, <laughs> And absolutely. this needs to be put into This is, forget loan, executive forget order. loan forgiveness. No. This is more important. Yes. Because after you get the money back, where are you going to keep it? This is class warfare. This is class warfare of the highest degree. Yes. So, that's... Do you hear yeah, the that's, I don't know where we're going with this, but... <laughs> we have to start go. a revolution. Yeah, start... We have to at least start cabinet meetings or something. <laughs> we have to work our way and get the president on board. I want to see our politicians talk about that one. Yeah. That would be interesting. That will get people's attention on C-SPAN. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Liven it up a little bit. Yeah. Watch some late night C-SPAN. <laughs> Woo. What All is right. happening? Yeah, I, I think the we, we've spun off too much between the <laughs> between our our proposal and c-span so you know what i think we're at the part of the show where we need to start wrapping it up and calling it a night um because for us it has been a night we are doing this episode live 
Uh, so we want to thank you guys for tuning in and uh, hope you enjoyed. Um, and uh, also we want to insist uh, that if you are following us uh, on uh, social media, make sure you're following us on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribing to our YouTube channel page. Um, make sure that you're following us on Facebook uh, so that you get Facebook Live notifications for when we do go live. And you're following us on Spotify so you can take us on the go, uh, whether it is the video form or just the audio, because Spotify does both. So there's a lot of ways that you can listen to the show um, through those methods. It's, it's foolproof. Nice. <laughs> Absolutely. It needs to be foolproof with us because we are fools. Yes, exactly. <laughs> As you can tell from the last half of the show. Absolutely. <laughs> if you have recommendations for better content, maybe, <laughs> you can find us individually on Twitter. You can send us your sports, entertainment, or odd news stories there. I'm at Mikey Costanzo, M-I-K-E-Y-C-O-S-T-A-N-Z-O. And I am at Rich Liebig, R-I-C-H-L-I-E-B-I-G. You can find us on Twitter and let us know individually if you want us uh, to know about things or if you want us to talk about something specific on next week's episode. Any odd news stories come my way so Mike doesn't know. Um, but you know what? It's uh, it, it, We're going to have everything open because football season starts next week. We're going to have our fantastic four picks again. We're going to be just critiquing uh, the Eagles and other teams. I can't wait for NFL season. It truly is the most wonderful time of the year football season coming back after labor day i'm looking forward yes. to it so uh ready to go I'm, I'm i'm anxious and ready to go on that so make sure you you definitely tune into next week's episode as we hit the 2022 nfl season into full gear uh but for right now that will do it i think uh you got anything else mike no, I'm good. Ready for uh, Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, and yeah, uh, the got, football the football season next week. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, but for right now, we got to wrap this up. This has been the Crispy Noodle Podcast. Let us be the Crispy Noodle in your vegetarian salad of life and boring news. That will do it. We'll see you guys next week. See you guys. Later. Bye-bye, all you fine peoples. Good night. Some of us have great stories, pretty stories that take place at lakes with boats and friends and noodle salad. A lot of people, that's their story. Good times, noodle salad.